a real estate agent in uh, Sacramento and they went over asking, which is pretty common for this market right now. But anybody else got any other insights? Uh, Matt, Matt's dropping some some nice stuff in the chat, guys. Thank yeah, you, I pulled a, absolutely. I, exactly what Steve's talking about. We have a system that tracks bond markets up and down and that's just a screenshot from the last week or actually no, it looks like last month. Uh, last few days, last week, it dropped a ton. So we've seen a lot of volatility, exactly like what Steve's saying, hoping it levels out. But with what you said about Powell, that's, that's on a lot of wrenches in the mix. So we'll see. <laughs> yeah. Well, Matt, you want to talk about the bond markets and like how that may, uh, why, why we should pay attention to that? <clears throat> uh, I, honestly, if Steve's willing to jump in, I think he's better on the bond portions. You there, Steve? Sure. Let me. So it's there's worry. So it's always people always jump jump from uh, you have large investors, millions of dollars. It always jumps from stock market to mortgage bonds. They look at wh where they're going to get the best return on their income when it comes to doing financing. Uh, right now, with tapering ha with the tapering word uh, happening. It's, we're not going to uh, be seeing um, these lower rates anymore. They're, you know, if someone, if I go to buy a million dollars uh, at 3%, well, and then I want to sell that to another group, um, they're, they're going to put their cut into it like, like 10, well, we call it 10 points or like 0.10%. Um, and then you're going to have other groups do the same thing. And that's what we're uh, running into right now. It's like we had the stock market had a huge crash. Uh, well, significant crash. Uh, mortgage bonds are doing the same thing. It's They're not seeing uh, the best interest rates. So they're going to move their money to where they will get better rates. And so be either private lending or... Um, I mean, on some of this may even be treasuries to get the better rates. And that's what we're dealing with right now is there was that uncertainty. Um, yeah, I hope that I, don't know, I probably kind of went a little over the place there, but that's basically what we're dealing with. Um, people I are mean, like, hey, where do we safely put our money right. and get the best return? Yeah. So with with the feds pulling out of buying bonds, essentially that's going to raise the prices of bonds, which is ultimately going to affect not only rates, but the prices of home overall. So that's a, a simple way to put it. Yes. I, um, Where are you guys seeing on your side, Corey? I'm curious on the private lending. Are you seeing more? Um, we're we're seeing like the opposite. So capital is getting cheaper. Leverages are becoming more aggressive. Um, but I, I, we're a little bit behind, um, except for like when, if there's a drastic uh, change in, in the capital markets, like it, when COVID happened, then, then it affects us like almost instantly. But yeah, um, yeah I, I, so Powell was saying that they don't, he still, they don't think that they're going to be, adjusting interest rates until maybe Q2 of next year, right? Which is kind of what they said early on when uh, when all this started happening, uh, when they started dropping the rates, um, they said 2020, uh, 2022 or 2023, right? So if you're shooting for Q2 in 20, next year, I mean, there's a little bit of time there. There, but and that's he, what we thought, but we're like, Mortgage company, you know, big mortgage companies like uh, Citywide, they're hedging already. Oh. Uh, like we we had we had uh, multiple price increases happen uh, this week, and we had you know lock lock now type situations. Um, so that tells me it's like okay, they're listening to what mm -hmm. he's saying, but they're not believing it. Right. Um, and we all know. I mean, it's you know. Buy when it's low, sell when it's high. Um, yeah. So there is, 
what we heard and but what I'm actually saying from the markets, and especially when you have big finance companies doing like what we did this week, um, I don't know how much I can really trust Powell right now. So it's like I, I've had multiple uh, people right now, they're in loans, they're in contracts, looking to close. Uh, it was like lock, let's lock now. Um, because we saw they had, I don't have, sorry, I didn't have time this week to do like send one of my, uh, the graphs showing the, you know, the rates and the market and everything. Uh, but I mean, we broke resistance this week and we broke resistance last week, Friday. And there was, there, there was some thought that's like, okay, they're looking at the, the market, they're looking at the numbers that things will improve. Um, but we ended up, you know, it, it, it didn't go that route. Uh, mm -hmm. So that brings uncertainty. When you have people that are, you know, they're millions of dollars that they're looking to invest, they want more, uh, they're, they're going to go to safe spots to invest their money. Um, and right now at the mon bond market, uh, mortgage bonds specifically, um, there's just a lot of uncertainty going on right now. So I, if you have anyone in deals right now, I would likely lock them. Uh, no. I'd lock them ASAP. Uh, if they're long term, you're looking at sixty to ninety days. I'd probably. I mean, it's a gamble. But I mean, they, I'd probably wait in that and just let. I, I have a feeling people are. I mean, Powell's words definitely had me worried, and then the way the big markets reflected they're like nope let's you know let's yeah. cut our losses um i would almost have i would almost just lock people in now and just go with the safe bet yeah we have to we have to remember that jerome powell too it's like um he has a tough position because people hang on yeah. to every single word that comes out of his mouth so he has to balance you know i guess telling the truth but also not stirring panic because that just for him saying like, you know, saying something wrong can shift the markets dramatically and hurt a lot of people. So like, like you're saying, Steve, like it's one thing to take his words, but you kind of want to watch the companies that, you know, what, what moves are they making? Like, like citywide, like your company, you know, and, and see what, where, what moves are they making? Right. Cause it's like, they, they kind of know. They know the, the unspoken words that he cannot say um, and where it could be heading. So let's exactly. you have to take his words with a grain of salt um, and and keep asking the right people and the right questions, you know? So I think it's great. Thanks, Steve, for always jumping on it and informing yeah, us. Yeah, no, definitely. Was, yeah. Sorry I haven't been as much. It's been Oh, where is that? Yeah, yeah, apologies. Normally we meet every Friday and talk about all this before jumping into the call, but haven't oh, awesome. yet today. <laughs> yeah, thank you guys. Yeah. Absolutely. Anytime. Well, um, before we get started, it uh, looks like uh, Mr. Chris Watchendorf and Mr. Alexander Young, they're living their best life over here. They're out on a hike and <laughs> you see these guys having a blast over here. Let's see the view, guys, just real quick before we move on. Where are you at, Chris? Coco Head? Uh, yeah, I'm on the side of Coco Crater, the land bridge. I don't oh, know how to turn this thing around. I get some of that weather up here at the stairway to heaven, man. Because this is, uh, this is not, my view is not the same right now. Alex went to stairway to heaven, and it's, it's all clouds. <laughs> Beautiful right now here. <laughs> nice. Okay. It's so crazy. You guys are on the same island. One side is clear and one side is like super cloudy. It's like going through the H3 tunnel. It's oh, like yeah. you go through H3. It's like one side's porn, you know, Carlos side's porn rain. The other side's like bright, sunny, and dry. <laughs> That's it. It's sunny where Alex is. I just think he's also with the Right. Yeah. Yep. It's sunny up there, guys. It's uh, just cloudy all around here. It's not, not that sweet. <laughs> well, if you guys want to do some sunshine dances for me, I appreciate it. <laughs> Fired up to hear Jeremy crush it. I love you guys. I'm going to mute out now. Love you, bro. All right. All right, guys, let's get started. Um, 
thanks everybody for jumping on this Friday. And uh, uh, this is going to be an awesome call because it's actually kind of like a follow up call uh, with uh, our good friend Jeremy Mateo over here. And uh, but before we um, pass it over to him to talk about his uh, deal that he just exited, um, why don't we open it up to the room for leads, needs, and good deeds? Does anybody have anything out there they need? I want to congratulate uh, Mr. Richie Baggio and uh, Ashley for closing their latest deal. Um, I heard that was a, a nice one, yeah. How long were you in that one for, Richie? That was quick. Yeah, so it was a full renovation and close to close is 78 days. So that, that was a good that's one. That's close to close 78 days. Oh, yeah, that's – and that wasn't an easy rehab either, was it? No. I mean, still had a lot of work. Jeremy, I got a good comp for you, man. There you go. <laughs> hey, bro. Hey, Richie money bags right there, bro. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. But Not actually, only did he close, did. like, in 78 days from execution to, to finish, but – he closed with a cash offer and it was, I thought it was a hundred thousand above asking price. We're just a little shy cash. And it, the closing was in under three weeks. I don't know if it was two weeks or three weeks, but all around like awesome, awesome flip for Richie. Yeah. Nice That's job guys. And wasn't it like you guys are that you are already pricing pretty like kind of on the higher end. Uh, or yeah, no. recorded. So, <laughs> yeah, we recorded. So, I guess we can share a little bit. But I ran my numbers at 890 on the exit when I bought it. And um, we 78 had, days before you sold, right? Yeah, so, 890. And then uh, we listed at 989. And then we recorded at um, million 79. Oh my God. Yeah, when he first ran comps, he was pretty spot on with his resale. And that's the thing, like, when we talk about what's going on at the market on Oahu, like, what markets are going to have a correction more yeah. than others. And Eva, I just feel, is really one of those markets because it, we, in two months, we're, we, didn't, we don't see right now in these certain areas, like 20,000 or 30,000 jumps. We're seeing 100, $200,000 jumps per month, which is significant for sure. Two months prior, it was definitely 90, 900 ARV on the high end. Coming on market was 950, 970, and then sale for three bedroom was over a million. So you were, Richie, you were almost 200 grand above your target. Yeah. And that was only from 70, from, for 78 days, your target changed from 890 to a million, how much? Oh my God. Yep. That's scary, guys. Wow. That's awesome for you, Richie. Hey, Jeremy, we should do like a coffee talk, like get away with everybody. And uh, it'll be, um, I, I know a guy who has, we got some money now. <laughs> you can sponsor the coffee talk uh, getaway. I like that idea. <laughs> nah, congrats, Richie. No, yeah, congrats. thank you, Ashley. Yeah. You. You're welcome, Richie. Congrats. He's got it. All Good right. Good Friday for sure. Good Friday. Sushi on Richie. Woo! Um, okay, does anybody else have anything? <laughs> oh, yeah, no can. We can't go to restaurants. I, I cannot. Oh yeah, right, right, right. All right, guys. Anything else? Does anybody have any anything? Any deals they got to take care of? They're raising capital for, or any deals? Because deals is the one that's hard to come by nowadays. I have a guy that is looking to subdivide a lot. He has three point five acres up in Pupukea. It's country zoning, and he wants to split it into three one-acre parcels. Do you guys know somebody that could help him do that? What can you do on country zoning? Can you can you have one dwelling on country zoning? You can, right? Yeah, I believe so, and I think maybe even a farm dwelling too. Ashley, I know she knows more. 
uh, I believe it's one house per acre and you can have as many farm dwellings as you want. Um, but farm dwellings can't have kitchens and, and bathrooms. Can't have kitchens and bathrooms. Pretty oh, sure. I mean, double problem. check. But I mean, you get, you put the bathrooms in after the permits. All right, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I double check though. I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> Are they doing septic? I mean, Oh yeah, is this, they're probably, is there uh, infrastructure in there for sewer and electric? Oh, it's all, it's all cesspool. It's been that way for years. He, he's lived there. Karin went to school with his daughter and I mean, they've been there forever. It's, he's a uh, Lyman, like Lyman Gate and Lyman Museum and all that. They're a long time yeah. family for, of Oahu. Wow. Nice guy. Okay. Awesome. So if anyone's looking for some land up North Shore, then, uh, well, he needs to start the process. So I was going to reach out to the grads, um, unless oh, yeah. somebody has it, somebody else that they <laughs> recommend that could move it faster. Um, Jeremy grad is good. I heard. Um, I haven't done one with him. I've done one with his father, Jeff, when he was in, you know, running the show. Um, but yeah, if you need somebody, Roger, we can get you somebody. Yeah, for sure. Ashley knows. Uh, may too right so may can help may but she's kind of semi-retired i grad i mean i just spoke to jeremy grad the son this week he's doing some north shore projects right now and he's just so familiar at north shore and cpr is i think he's the guy really okay thank you right on roger um Woo. all right let's hop into kick all you want to get started i can introduce uh Mr. Jeremy Mateo again. How's it going, Jeremy? Jeremy! What up, guys? Thanks for having me again. Yeah, good to have you on again, bro. And uh, I guess since we spoke about your your deal initially uh, last time, um, I kind of want to dive into, like, just learning lessons and stuff like that and, and, and how the project went. Um, but can we give everybody a, a summary again on the, your first flip, right, that you already exited? Uh, maybe... Again, how you found it, how you funded it, how you, um, how it was on the resale, and uh, maybe closing the closing time frame. Did you hit your mark? Did you go over budget? Right. So, a uh, little bit of details on the project. Got it. Got it. Yeah. So, what's up, guys? Um, so, I got this flip. Uh, this is my first year of uh, real estate investing. A little background behind me is I've been a realtor since maybe like 2014. And uh, starting this year, I was like, okay, um, I want to take my real estate skills to the next level. I want to flip homes. And then I discovered this thing called hard money. And then I was like, oh, this is cool. Um, so I met with, uh, you know, Corey and Alex at their office. They kind of explained to me what they do. And I'm like, all right, awesome. I just need to find the deal now. Um, so I always, you know, now being in it for like, you know, nine months, I always, see, you know, uh, veteran investors finding their deals through like websites or like this thing called PPC. I had no idea what that was. Um, so for me, I was like, okay, how am I going to find a deal? And the way I did it was uh, through the thing that kind of helped me build my real estate business as an agent, which is social media. Um, last year in 2020, I sold 24 homes in like 12, with a 12 million in volume and I got all those, probably 99% of those deals came from my Instagram. And it wasn't like running ads, sponsored ads. It was literally just being myself on social media and talking about real estate, but also showcasing like what I do day to day, whether it be real estate, working out, being stupid and partying, you know, whatever. Um, for those that know me and have been following me for a while, like I'm just very upfront and honest with who I am and I'm comfortable. Uh, with what I do. And um, so I was like, okay, I'm going to use social media to find my deal. So literally, okay, Jeremy, wait, I gotta, I gotta say something on that. Cause like, yeah. you're, you are right. Like you're, you're, you're honest, you know, and you're you, you know, and yeah. um, if you guys haven't seen it yet, yeah, Jeremy did, uh, he had a segment with uh, CNBC came out, right. To uh, yeah. do an episode on you. And uh, I loved it, you know, cause like what I saw was my friend, like that's, that's Jeremy. You know what I mean? It was, there was no smoke and mirrors, you know, like you, you weren't, um, you know, you, you, you said like faults that you bought this, you went aggressive. This it was kind of risky, did that, but like, and then, uh, but to me, I was like, 
I know who you are, you know, so like that, that's exactly who you are. So you didn't change for the international, you know, uh, publicity that you're about to get. And then you got a bunch of hate or like just people on the comments, right? Kind of just saying all kinds of stuff, which I guess, um, you know, I, if you don't know you, you know, like then, then I guess you could see that point of view. But honestly, like what I took away from it was that I could appreciate the fact that you are that was my friend, you know, that was you, you know, you didn't change for, you know, CNBC or anything like that. You didn't hide anything. That was awesome of you. So just wanted to point that out <laughs> as you're talking about hey. how you're you because you really are. Thanks, man. No, yeah. Like, so what uh, Corey's talking about is, uh, so when I bought my condo last year, I put like so much in renovations, including uh, the remake, the remodel and like furniture, which was like around a hundred thousand dollars. And, you know, what he was saying with the hate was that people were saying, oh, this kid, bought a $560,000 condo. Uh, there's no way he was doing that on his own or like, like he's stupid for spending that much. And I'm like, all right, whatever. Um, but you know, it's just like, I'm not afraid to be me. And I think that's what helps me uh, excel as a real estate agent using social media is that, you know, since the pandemic, I, everyone in their mothers is a real estate agent, you know, literally me, my mother is a real estate agent. <laughs> so, um, you know, so you have to find a way to, you know, separate yourself from everyone. And everyone has the same, you know, Jeremy real estate, you know, Vince real estate, whatever, Jay real estate. And literally they're all posting the same picture from HBR saying, oh, the medium price of homes went up to a million. Like I see that everywhere. You have to be different. And that's how I approach, you know, real estate um, and social media. So I guess, um, you know, back to at the beginning of the year, I was like, okay, I'm going to use social media to find a deal. So I literally post on my story, does anyone want to sell their house or does anyone know anyone that wants to sell their house that's run down uh, or unwanted? You know, I'm willing to pay cash and uh, let me know. Literally, I did that and I posted that like almost every single day on my story. So it's just like for my followers, it's kind of like an advertisement. And what's cool is that since it's an advertisement, I'm not paying anything. It's free. And I just posted that for like a month. You know, I was looking for deals on MLS, just getting my feet wet and walking inside of these, you know, rundown properties. And then sure enough, one day, some random person who wasn't following me uh, messaged me saying, hey, Jeremy, a friend of mine told me about you that you're looking to buy homes and that you can buy all cash. And I was like, yeah, sure. And she told me that uh, there's a realtor involved. So I was like, okay, cool. I'm a realtor as well. Uh, I got the realtor's contact. He told me the details. It was a single family in Makakilo. Uh, it's been vacant for years. There's extensive termite damage and that they've been in escrow for over a year. Uh, the neighbors were trying to buy it. And I was like, oh, okay, that's pretty interesting. I wonder why it's been in escrow for a year. I went there um, and I was like inspecting the property and the realtor was going to meet with me. And then uh, some guy approaches me and he's like, uh, oh, what are you doing here? I'm like, oh, I'm thinking about buying this property. And he's like, oh, how'd you hear about it? And I was like, uh, word of mouth. And he's like, oh, okay, cool, cool. And then um, then a car comes by and then parks in the driveway. And then he's like, oh, hey, Jeremy, sorry, I'm late. And he's like, oh, are you? The realtor is like, yeah. And then the other guy that I was talking to walked away. And he's like, oh, that's the neighbor that's trying to buy it. I'm like, oh, <laughs> so we went inside the house you know, Damn. I'm looking, yeah <laughs> i was like oh dude i'm trying to scoop this deal for me sorry but uh yeah i'm w walking around and i'm like oh how come they've been in escrow for a year and he said uh this is where i start learning about you know the pros of hard money versus traditional lending and he's like well the appraiser keeps coming they keep give, getting different lenders and each appraiser is saying this is unlivable we cannot lend to you so they're like, uh, so I was like, oh, okay, wow. I, I didn't really think uh, they could do that. So I'm just looking through a property. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do this. And he's like, okay, well, they have one more lender. If they reject them, then I'll, we'll cancel. And then I'll tell the sellers to go with your offer. Uh, so maybe like three weeks goes by and he says, yeah, they got rejected. Uh, it's for you. And I asked the realtor, I'm like, oh, um, what are they in escrow for? And uh, I could tell he was like a new realtor. And uh, what he, he kind of made a new realtor mistake and he told me 540. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, there's no way I'm going more than 540. And then he, he was like, okay, um, well, here's my offer for 540. And he's like, well, the sellers, you know, it's been a year, the state of the market has increased. So they want to do it for 585. And I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. You said 540. You just told me. <laughs> and then um, he was like, well, if you don't want it for 585, like we're going to list it on the market. Uh, next this Monday and it's like Wednesday and I'm like 
oh my God, I can't let that happen, you know? So wrote up an offer and I was like, here, um, if you give me 540, you know, we'll make it win-win. I will waive my commission as a realtor and I will pay for your closing costs, um, you know, and I'll buy completely as is and I'm using, you know, I'm using cash. And then uh, they thought about it and they're like, okay, we'll give you your deal, all of that. And I'm like, oh, sweet, awesome. I'm a master negotiator. And then they're like, but we want $10,000 initial deposit and a $10,000 additional deposit. And I was like, uh, okay. <laughs> so as a new investor, never, never did this before. That is my first, you know, hurdle. Like, you know, this is the part where like most people will be like, that's too risky for me. I don't want to risk $10,000. But I knew like, I was like, no, like this is a good deal. Like there's no way I'm going to back out of this. I just have to be willing to risk this $20,000, you know? And um, I think that's kind of like what allowed me, my real estate experience allowed me to be confident in this deal. Because, you know, this is a big single family home in Makakilo. The lot is like 6,400 square feet or something. And I knew right away that was a good deal. So I was like, okay, I just, uh, this is the moment where I like, you know, give, write this check. This is part of the whole experience. So I just did it. And then, you know, kind of just YOLO and I'm like, all right, here we go. We're doing this. Um, and that's when I started getting bids and all of that. And uh, I brought the deal to Corey. And then, um, you know, at the time I did not know how hard money worked. I thought they're going to be like, oh yeah, we're just going to give you all this money and you can do it for free. Awesome. And then they're like, okay, uh, you're going to need to come up. We, we can fund it, but we're going to have to, uh, you know, you're going to have to come up with 25% down. I was like, okay, yeah, sure. No problem. But I didn't have that money. <laughs> so this is where I like reached out to friends and I was like, Hey guys, I'm going to flip a house. You want to do it with me? And they're like, okay, cool. So we all like pitched in thirds and then um, we did the deal together. So that's kind of like how I found the deal. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. How many friends jumped in on the deal with you? Uh, two other friends. Two other friends. All right. That's, that's pretty cool, man. There's so much to unpack in that short little story you shared. So yeah. much. <laughs> yeah. Cause the, the front end negotiations get overlooked a lot of times. And yeah. um, um, Ashley and Tay did a, a live yesterday on, on, on Tay's Instagram live about in, uh, like investor and realtor relationships and what makes it good. And there's a lot of great stuff in there. You know, in fact, so much so that like maybe I, we're thinking uh, maybe we'll have Ashley on again next week to talk about that because but you're the, you know, you're an experienced realtor. So you kind of already have that already. Now, granted, you're talking to the other buyer thinking that he was the realtor, right? <laughs> so, um, but like usually like how you communicate the message on the front end and how you do the um, preliminary negotiations, it's kind of like Jerome Powell, you know, every, every word that comes out of your mouth to the other side, and it, it has to be the right tone too, the delivery um, makes all the difference in the world. That makes the difference of getting a deal or not getting a deal, you know, because we would get deals um, in, in very competitive situations uh, where our offer is not the strongest offer, but you have to have someone selling it for you, you know, if you're being represented and they have, they have to be good at it. You know, they have to know the right words to say the, and also in the right way. You know, like with humility, but confidence, you know, like you want to let the other side know it's like, hey, like I'm, I'm probably not the, the strongest offer, but like I am the guy, you know, I am like I will close. Right. And I want this house. So like it, it, that makes the difference sometimes Like people will give up an offer that's like 50,000 or more um, higher. But like, if you know that okay, I want to sell it to that person because she really wants it. And they're, conf you know, they're, it sounds like they're, they're very confident in closing. So that makes all the difference in the world, but the front end gets overlooked a lot. Corey and guys, it's like, how many times have you chosen a deal? Cause you knew the financing was solid. Right. Yep. Like, it's like, oh, I know that loan officer, or I know the person that they're, they're like, the financing is, you know, legit. Mm -hmm. Has that, I, I'm asking the group, has that uh, turned or, you know, pushed as real estate agents pushed you to choose a certain, a certain you know, bidder 
because you knew the fine like all right i've worked with them i know how how they are it's gonna make they're gonna make it happen oh. yep yep 100 percent. i i rather because it happens way too much especially in this market right where people are just throwing out numbers to to get the get get the contract but um we always want to know like who's the buyer on the other end and and how how uh, reliable is their financing and yeah so that matters a lot even the agent on the other end like if you know the the agent on the other end is just very incompetent and like they're known to blow deals you know blow up deals then you you may not take that offer because of that you know like or that's my what you know my case and and yeah what do you so what would you say, yeah, okay. Jeremy, what would you say? Like, would you, because you represent uh, sellers as well, right? And and obviously you you represent yourself when you're selling. Would you take like when you're when you're exiting, right? Do you consider that, or you just take highest and and best terms? <laughs> oh no, yeah, absolutely. Like, like, there's a bunch of like I guess la layers of screening. Of course, we're gonna start with the highest and best, but then we looked at the highest and best. It's like, okay, how are they paying the highest and best? Are they doing cash? Are they doing a VA or, you know, doing um, conventional? So that's what I did uh, when I exited my flip. We probably had, I think like, I think five, five offers. Um, so they kept coming in one by one. I'm like, okay, cool, cool. And then when it was a deadline, I looked at all of them. Uh, we started from the highest and best and they had like a conventional, it was like 10% down. So I was like, wow, that is a really strong offer. Then we looked at some others that were kind of close, but one was like a VA, uh, no appraisal clause. I was like, ooh, that's kind of that's kind of hard, you know. And it's, it's just like, wow, like this is how it feels to be on the seller side, you know. Because <laughs> um, I, I represent a lot more buyers, and it's just like it's it's rough, man. But now it's just like, wow, this is I have the power now, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that's Jeremy. Awesome. Now that uh, now that you've done this deal, hey, do you feel like with now that you got more experience, do you feel like you would have done something different on the negotiations to maybe squeeze like 5,000 better pricing or 10,000 or what would you do different now, uh, now that you kind of know what you're doing? Oh yeah, that's a really good question. So if I, with the knowledge I have now going back, um, I think 540 would have been the most I could do, but I would have went out and found a private money lender for the 25%. Uh, because during um, the whole renovation process, I want to see if my partners aren't here. No, they're not. Okay, yeah, I did all the work. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, literally, yeah, I did everything. Yeah, yeah. And I made no money. There was no yeah. money. Just yeah. the check first. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. I, was, I did Love all it. the work. And um, I did, you know, uh, they're literally just, you know, the people, uh, like, I'm just literally texting them the updates. Um, one of my other partners, Fro, like his uncle was the GC. So that was actually a really good thing. And that GC got us, uh, so we got like six bids. Cause I was like super paranoid. I wanted to be extra sure that we could get like the best guy ended up being my partner's uncle. Uh, that was like a $75,000 rehab. Everyone else was giving us 90 to a hundred thousand dollars. And, um, in exchange for him giving us a discount, he could only work weekends. So that extended the project an extra month, which meant an extra like $4,300 in holding costs. But we thought, okay, we spent an extra $4,300 to save $30,000. So I guess that's like one contribution one of my partners did, but um, I think I could have done that myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, now that I know what private money lenders are, you know, that's kind of like the uh, route that I'm going. Uh, now that I have my second deal going on, um, that one was a really easy deal that I actually found in the middle of my first deal. And um, that one was like such a good deal. I couldn't let it go. So I just wrote the contract, not knowing how I'd get the money. And I think I remember you guys uh, hearing from me like, hey, I'm trying to look for uh, gap funding. And then sure enough, I found it. Uh, but yes, uh, to answer your question, summarize it. To go back, I would reach out to private money lenders. Yeah, that's okay. awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, then you answer the question about contractors because every new flipper, anybody who's new in the space is always like, okay, so once I get a deal, now the hard part begins is trying to find contractors and how do you, uh, you know, leverage them well, how do you manage them? So you vetted out six of them. You got lucky because your partner uh, had an uncle that was a GC. So uh, how did you keep them accountable to budget? Did they stay close to budget, on budget, over budget? 
Oh yeah. So we uh, told him, okay, uh, once he gave us the bid, he's like, oh, it's going to be like 75 plus or minus whatever this. And we wanted this, this, this done. And uh, he was really uh, cooperative with what we wanted to do. Mm-hmm. I know all the GCs we interviewed, they wanted a 50% down payment. We told him like, hey, like we confront 15 grand first. Uh, then once we start getting the draws, uh, from Temple, then we can start paying you more. And <laughs> that's kind of what we did. Uh, for me, uh, since I'm super gung-ho about social media, I would go there every week, uh, maybe like on a Monday, because he only worked on it the weekends. I'd go there Monday, shoot like a 30-second TikTok. And um, so me shooting that TikTok was like me checking on the progress, you know? Um, and so far, every single week, there was substantial work done. So I, was, I wasn't really worried about hitting deadlines. But if, let's say... Uh, if I were to, on future projects, if I go there the next week and not much is done, then I'd probably like tell the GC, hey, what's going on? You know, I want to know what's going on like this. Uh, I always hear stories about GCs not meeting their deadlines. Uh, fortunate, fortunately, I wasn't experiencing that problem, um, but he was really good. He was trustworthy. I mean, he's my f- uh, friend's uncle, so I didn't really expect any uh, anything bad to happen. And he was really, uh, he had good communication with us too. So, awesome. so you- did you factor in the, the extra holding time uh, before you closed the deal then? Because you knew that you already knew that he could only work over the weekends and get it to get it done. Yep. Yep. I, uh, when I was calculating it um, in the beginning, I had this really janky Excel sheet that I found on Google. Um, and I factored in to have this deal closed in seven months. We actually closed it in five. Um, but once mistake was that, uh, we, uh, I calculated the profit wrong. Um, so at, I th- we thought we were gonna sell at like 740 and expect like almost, I think 100,000 in um, profit, maybe 90,000, but I didn't take into consideration like different small detailed expenses, um, staging, stuff like that. Uh, then I got a better calculator from Alex Camacho, if you guys know him. And then when I use that calculator with way more detailed expenses and costs, that estimation was a lot closer to what we really got. Nice. Yeah. Those, the little expenses, like they can get you, you know, like even the, the, the cost to maintain the landscaping or something, you know, and, and the termite inspection or surveys that you got to get um, all kinds of stuff. Right. So it all adds up, but um, uh, there's a question in here. Uh, I don't know if uh, from Joe, Oh. Uh, just curious, do you have a criteria you follow now that you are an official real estate investor? So I think you kind of answered that question, right? With now you use a spreadsheet, <laughs> a legit yeah. spreadsheet. So no, not a janky um, one. We've all yeah. started with janky ones. So don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah, the way I found it, I literally Googled uh, house flip calculator spreadsheet on Google. And I found the first link. And I'm like, oh, this, this looks pretty good. Yeah. Use that, <laughs> we all started that way bro we still yeah. have to be honest right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well um okay so let's can, let's go over the economics of the deal so purchase at what price renovated for what price maybe what was your target renovation and did you go over did you come under and then arv right or what do we, what did you sell at for yeah good question so we bought at 540 uh, the rehab uh, with our GC, he told us it was going to be, I think, like $78,000. Um, and then after we listed it, we were in escrow for eight ten. But then we, uh, after the home inspection, they found things that we kind of overlooked. Uh, there were some beams under the house that like we kind of missed that were, they looked damaged. But like when you like knocked on it or whatever, it, it was solid. But I mean, the home inspection is made to make you look bad. If you're the seller, you know, so the buyers, they wanted a $30,000 price reduction. And I'm like, you can't just come in, aim high and then like, blah, 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 and say, okay, we're going to do low. I know that the classic realtor trick, you know, I, I've done it. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure other realtors have done it too. And um, so we're like, no, 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 There's negotiation at that too. So we're like, all right, we're going to fix A, B and C, which was uh, we're going to waterproof the roof. We're not going to replace it. We're going to waterproof it. Uh, we'll fix those beams that you wanted under, and then uh, we'll give you like a $15,000 credit. Uh, that had to do with the open circuit uh, electricity. So that's like one thing um, 
uh, I was like kind of like debating while fixing because it was probably going to be fifteen thousand dollars to uh, rewire the whole electricity through the house. But I figured I could get away with the whole oh this house was built in the sixties you know we're just fixing all the cosmetic stuff. Um, but they kind of like brought up a good point in their negotiation is that they had kids and you know this could be a fire hazard and you know this is where I had my realtor hat on and uh, like you know I don't want to be known as a guy that sells a faulty house, you know, and something goes wrong, I'd feel terrible, you know? Um, so I was like, okay, uh, we won't rewire it, but we'll just, you know, to save time, we'll give you a credit. So we ended up closing at 795. Um, the total expenses though, even though the, the quote was 78 grand, we had to spend like, I think four grand on staging. That was like a afterthought, uh, it was done. And I kind of like, I think asked uh, Kamohai, I asked like Dustin, for their opinions because their flips are always amazing and they're like yeah dude you should stage so thank you uh Kamal high for that tip um <laughs> but yeah definitely um when we hired the stager i was so happy with it i was like wow this looks really nice like i i'm i suck at designing or decorating i'm colorblind too so i'll probably <laughs> do all kind of weird stuff so i'm glad <laughs> we hired her <laughs> um and then uh after the home inspection when we had those beams repaired uh, our um our gc also had to like charge us a little extra for that so all in all it was about 85 i think eighty five thousand dollars in uh renovation we sold at 70 795 and after everything was said and done our profit total was seventy two thousand dollars and then we split that three ways because i had two other partners um that kind of just like watched me make tiktoks <laughs> <laughs> Hey, they got a good deal, man. Oh. That's what everyone was saying. I was like, what? Really? Like, damn. <laughs> we awesome. can say whatever because they're not on, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, no, you know, that's okay. awesome. Like, yeah, like I figured like, you know, even though they're not doing anything, like I wouldn't have been able to do it. And at that time, I didn't know about private money lenders. And like in hindsight, I feel good because like I accomplished what I want to do was flipping a home. And I helped my two buddies make 24 grand, you know, so now they're, they're, they owe their lives to me, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that was a great deal for, for them, but like, we want our investors to get paid very well, you know, like whether they're friends of ours or, or, you know, cause like that's the lifeline of our business, right? It's uh, we, we need, we need people to take the risk a little bit alongside us, maybe not as much risk because, <laughs> uh, when we sign on the line sometimes like we're signing away everything you know so um you know it's it's a lot of risk but uh i'm Absolutely. sure they're very grateful for that return yeah <laughs> okay so um i let me check i there's a couple of questions in here oh shoot i didn't even um, see that. <laughs> we have a um oh maybe i missed it oh what's a criteria like single family multi okay uh, I, th I guess uh, it doesn't really matter. Like either single family home is like kind of, you know, the best uh, preferred, but I'm down to work with condos, uh, but it really doesn't matter where, when it's just, what matters is the margin, you know, how low can I buy it for, you know, cause if it's a deal, then it's a deal. Um, but typically I, I, uh, I love, you know, Eva Beach, Kapolei, Makakilo, um, you know, Mililani, the really, really hot areas. And of course I know Eva Beach cause I grew up in Eva Beach. So those are kind of like the cities I'm kind of really, really trying to look for, but Hey, if someone. Leeward boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Eva Beach. No. <laughs> Rocking it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, well, yeah, if there's a deal in like Kaimuki, like for example, a third deal I'm about to work on with a partner. Um, we're going to buy that for 850 and, uh, the rehab is probably going to be, I think 200 to 250. And then we're going to live. Is, uh, the buy you make money on the buy. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. That is and, the uh, truth. one, one question I got is, uh, who are you working with that gave you seven, only 75% LTP. <laughs> you have to come in with 25 down. That was you guys. No, I know, but like who priced that for you? Was it Justin? Yeah, it was Justin, but uh it was okay, just like, um, Justin I, I for giving you. First time. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Like it, I was the first so time. We could hear more on this. No, we yeah, should we go into details? <laughs> was that Steve? 
details details about like are, are we is is this a Corey special oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> no, Corey I, special I, for charge them extra yeah <laughs> But yeah, it's all good. But now like the next deals I'm working on, it's uh, uh, 80, 80% now. So I'm cool with that. Um, I mean, I think it was my first deal. So it's just like, I, you just got to earn your stripes, you know, so I'm not going to complain. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. So that was a great first deal. Like what, maybe if you can give us like top three um, learning lessons from, from this one. Yeah. Oh yeah. The top three is um, I think the biggest thing that kind of stops anyone from doing Big things like this is their mindset so i think the first thing is you need to accept the fact and understand that anyone can do this do this that you are you are capable of this because it doesn't matter like if you're a high school dropout college dropout come from a rich family poor family white black latino gay straight anyone can do this but i will say that not everyone can do this you know uh you have to put in the, the time to understand your market uh you know assemble your team you have to understand comps uh, and, you know, get to know GCs and reach out. You have to be willing to do the hard work. But if you're willing to do that, then it's going to work um, because that's kind of my mindset. Like um, I was just I kind of like ingrained it in my mind when I was a young real estate agent. You know, I knew I accepted the fact that, OK, it's going to be hard in the beginning. I need to just work my ass off. And sure enough, it's going to pay off. And I just took that mentality into investing. I was like, OK, what am I good at? What am I not good at? I'm good at social media. I'm going to do social media. I'm going to find my deal. I don't have the money, but I'm going to find the money. And, you know, I'm going to make this work. And that's kind of like how you have to face uh, this whole concept, face this whole idea. Um, so that's the first one is your mentality. And then second one is, um, you know, expect things to go wrong. Expect to be stressed out. Expect to be super scared. I was super scared. Uh, I put 57 grand of my own money into this. And I was like, oh my gosh, like when they were doing the demo and I, like, I literally, there's big holes in the ground. I'm like, what did I do? You know? Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. um, and then on top of that, um, during all of that, I found a second deal, which was so good. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't let it go. So I had to give like five grand as a deposit. And that was literally my last five grand in my bank account. I had to sell some stocks to just cover my mortgage. Uh, I don't recommend that, but you know, when you have a really good gut feeling, you know, it's like, you just got to do what you got to do. Um, entrepreneurs know that feeling. Um, so just expect anything to happen, be prepared, uh, expect the best, but be prepared for the worst. Um, and there were times, yeah, I was scared, but I was like, you know, I just got to get through this. Um, and it's going to work out. And sure enough, you know, it was super awesome. And then the third, I guess, piece of advice when it comes to, you know, if you're new into real estate investing is network, you know, do things like this, meet so many other people. I remember um, in February when, or January when I first met Corey and Alex, I had no idea who they were. I didn't know who anyone in this community were. And I was actually scared. I was like, oh my God, we're, I'm going to meet with like these guys with all this money. And, you know, like, I don't want to like, I'm just starting from scratch again, meeting all these big investors. Like, I don't want to step on anyone's toes or offend anyone, but no, nah, like as soon as I immersed myself in the community, I was like, oh my God, I love these guys. Like, I feel like, like I looked up to everyone, like, you know, like you guys, Dustin, Kama High, you know, like Richie, Keone, all of you guys. I'm like, damn, these guys are freaking awesome. And they're super nice. And anytime I ask for advice, they're like, they tell me anything, you know? So that would be like a really big, crucial advice is network and meet as many people as you can. Yeah, I think those are great top theories. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, uh, you just made those up. That was just so eloquent. It was almost like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's so true. Yeah, it's so true. We wouldn't, Kiko and I wouldn't have been able to do like as many of, deals and projects that we've been able, you know, had the, I don't know, just the opportunity to be a part of without um, help, you know, without other people by our side, uh, mentors who we've leaned on and, uh, you know, even friends who become investors or, you know, maybe investors who become friends, you know, and, then, and that's, it's so fulfilling for me. And I always like to say, like, to me, it's never just business, you know, it's not, I never, like, I hate that saying where it's like, uh, oh, hey, it's business. Oh, sorry, it's just business, you know, like nothing personal, just business. To me, it's like 
no, that shit's personal to me. Yeah. You know? <laughs> business is like, if I'm going to do business with somebody, like it, there, it requires a level of trust, you know, and um, if I'm going to trust somebody, like, why don't just go all out and now your family with us too, you know, and we're, we're in this together. Like, that's how I see it, you know? So um, I, 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 we couldn't have done this with any, without help. Right. So networking is huge and building just genuine, mutually beneficial relationships is what will get you to the next level. hundred percent. Like, I love, I love that. And thanks for sharing Jeremy. Um, I don't know if you, did you have anything to, to show the group at all or any before and afters you got on social oh. or social media too, right? Yeah. Um, I guess I just want to like uh, real quick, I'll uh, talk about my second deal that I got. So uh, I kept saying like, oh, this was in the middle of my first deal. So my mindset was, okay, Jeremy, finish your first deal, just finish it. And then you can do that. Don't get too crazy, you know? And then all of a sudden this deal pops in my lap. It was a three bedroom in Hawakale. Uh, this is the comp that uh, Richie was talking about. Uh, so it was a really good buy. You buy it. I, uh, I bought it for 810. The rehab was like 10,000. Really, it wasn't even 10,000. It was like 3,000, but I had to pay for staging. Um, and then I could sell it. The ARV at the time was 940. I was like, oh my God, this is awesome. This is like an easy deal. I just got to landscape, uh, paint and buy a new fridge and that's it and remove junk, like easiest flip ever. And then, so that's why I was like, there's no way I'm letting this go. So wrote my last $5,000, sold some stock to pay my mortgage. And I had under contract. Um, and at that time, I didn't know how I was going to find, uh, the deal, but I heard this thing about private money. So I was like, okay, let me get some gap funding. Um, but I guess everything worked out because that was in May and it turns out that the seller, um, passed away last year. And on top of that, there was a divorce. So they had to get the divorce and the death, like through probate and with the, with the state. And, um, that kind of dragged the escrow. So instead of having 30 days to look for private money, I had like four months. So everything kind of worked out. And I, I think that was like one thing that showed me is like, okay, when you know it's a good deal and you're not, you're kind of scared, like you just have to face that, you know, scared feeling because if you know in your heart and your gut that it's a good deal, it's a good deal. And now, like I just put in two weeks of work, I'm, I'm about to list it uh, this next Tuesday and it's going to be, the ARV now is like 970. So just because of that delay, it increased by like 30 grand. Hopefully I get an all cash buyer like Richie and, uh, you know, sell for over a million. Hopefully it's before it. <laughs> his 75 days thing, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. And you know what? There's something to momentum in this game, you know, and uh, Richie and I had a lot of conversations about this early on, like years ago. Yeah, Richie, when um, it was hard, it was hard to come across deals. Deals were, uh, you know, scarce, but it's like when you get your first one done, like there's something about the, the energy that that deal creates, right? And that energy really comes down to relationships again, because when you do one deal, now you're going to the site, now you're, you're meeting the different vendors, the different um, service providers that require you to build relationships to get the project done, right? Like the landscapers or stagers or photographers that like you're building your team and every one of, every person on that, team of yours pr probably appreciates the business that you're giving them and they want to help you too. So if, you know, if you build the relationship strong with each and every one around you who knows what you're doing and sees that you're doing it, then they know that if they see another ugly house or abandoned house that they'll call you, you know, or if a, a potential deal comes by, they'll call you or somebody who has extra cash that wants to, you know, in get started investing in real estate, they'll call you. Right. So like, there's energy that generates from just the the opportunity of going into a deal so sometimes i see investors they get really like impatient when they're they want their first deal and so they force the numbers sometimes and then that's how you get into trouble you know and and uh Keiko and i we're not perfect you know we've lost a lot of money on some deals and uh if, but if that was our first deal like that would be our last deal, you know, we would not be here. So we have to make sure we hit some, we get some base hits and some home runs early on in the first few so that we can continue to, you know, do what we do and, and kind of grow 
the our our piggy bank so that we can stomach any mistakes or any corrections in the market right so but when you're when you're just getting started it's so antsy to get going that sometimes you force the numbers but if if you if you're too aggressive um then some you know you don't want the first one to be the last one right yeah. so but momentum does start when you get the first deal right and now you're in another now it sounds like you're getting into another one right yeah oh so yeah that'll yeah. be like three and, and what was your goal by I, I think you mentioned it before did oh, you have yeah. a goal for flips in a year or yeah my goal was a uh, four flips uh with a hundred thousand in profit and uh, i'm gonna hit that after i sell the second one so um uh, i won't hit the number goal but i'm hitting the income goal which is super dope um so i'm gonna see if i can just push that uh, and just, you know, just trying to like find more deals, make more relationships. Uh, what I've been seeing lately is that because of people following me on Instagram, they kind of like want me to teach them, you know, they're asking for help, which I'm down to. It's just, I can't individually hold their hand, take them to the site and show them everything. So now my kind of thing is like, instead of me looking for deals all the time, I'm telling everyone, Hey, I'll teach you everything. You won't need any money. Just find the deal. You know, I'm sure you guys see that on my Facebook. So it's kind of like I'm leveraging my social media following to find a deal while giving back, you know, I'll give them profit. I'll also teach them, you know, like when they say like, you can lead a horse or, to, or you can, you can teach man fish, something like that, you know, <laughs> fish, you know something like that. Yeah. <laughs> teach a man to fish a horse. There you go. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love it. How many people are on your team now? Uh, my real estate team or uh, investing? Your, your investing team. Oh, uh, just me. It's just, just me. You. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Well, I think that's what, that's a real powerful thing too. I liked what you said about mindset and getting started. And, and the, the fact that the majority of the people that are on this call are, are solopreneurs, you know, they're doing it themselves and mindset's huge. And I think that the biggest part, I think to real estate success is doing the hard things. And if you do the hard things, then the best things will come, but we're humans. And so we avoid the hard things. And the first deal is hard, which is why it takes so long to do the first one, right? But uh, I, I love your story because you're always doing new things, which are hard. The easy things is to just keep posting TikToks. I mean, yeah. after a while, those are like, yeah, these are easy. But those things will, you know, garner you a greater following. But the hard things is how do you put all that together? Leverage social media plus private lending, plus investing, plus coaching, plus mentoring, plus private lending. And that's a hard thing to come up with. But the fact that you're coming up with that uh, is really, really exciting. So I loved it for us to continue to watch that uh, because I think for all of us that don't have, say, big followings or tons of people with cash or an uncle that's a GC, the fact is every single one of us is given resources every day that's just around us. It's in our network. It's in our friends. It's in our family. Uh, we just got to piece that together and weave it into this fabric that becomes our own business model, if you will. Uh, and everyone's different, you know, not everyone's going to be a Jeremy and do really cool TikToks or go to Mexico and have really great times <laughs> and make us all jealous. Um, and not all of us are like Corey, who doesn't go anywhere and sees nice sights. He just hangs out at home, you know, <laughs> has Ashley nods her head, but, but every one of us is different. And so <laughs> I think what's exciting is, is you're doing what you can do and you're extremely successful. I'd encourage everybody else, you know, the point of this call every single week is not so we try to become Jeremy or become Corey or Keone. Like the world doesn't need more of repeats. What we need is people who bring our own innovation, right? And, and kind of put together a new business model. And that's what makes us rich is then we're giving insights to Keone's business and to your business and our business. And, and it's, that's super exciting. I didn't mean to make a, a long thing out of it, but your, your fish and horse thing inspired me. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, like what I think what we do, I feel it's very fair. Like our industry is fair and business and entrepreneurship as a whole is, uh, I feel it's fair. You know, if you get greedy in, in, in what we do and, uh, overly ambitious, um, you know, the, the, the market will slap you around, you know, and then you'll learn your lesson, you know, and hopefully that hopefully you'll learn, you'll, you'll be able to keep continuing, you know, you, and you get stronger. Right. But the people who, um, maybe come in uh, with a blind eye and, and, and just overly naive and not like you were, you took, you know, you had the hustle, the, the, the heart to go out there and research, okay, I need a, something to run my numbers. Like maybe somebody already figured this out and Google the spreadsheet. At least you did that, 
you know, and 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 not try to just guess, right? Because uh, these are important decisions that are being made, and sometimes it's uh, like it. I think it's kind of scary for myself. You can ask Ashley because. Like I'm an impulse buyer, you know, I'll just buy stuff. If I want it, I'll, I'll, I'll probably open up my wallet and pull my credit card out. I get bamboozled on Instagram all the time. I'm giving you too much credit. It's just if an ad comes in front of you and you can click the button, yeah. you get it 16 weeks later and you're like, what was this? Yeah, and then it comes in broken from China and like I, I never learned my, my lesson on that one, but <laughs> like... Sometimes I just want to see their sales funnel, to be honest, you know, let's see what their sales process is. Like, how are they going to convert me? But anyways, um, like I, I like you had the heart to to do the to do the hustle work, you know, because that's what's required. Like the process is pretty simple for what we do. Buy low, add value, sell high. You know, that's the fix, fix and flip, basically, you can wrap up, but it's not easy because of all the little miscellaneous details. And uh, I think sometimes if you get into it, like um, new investors, they get sold the dream on stage, you know, and then, then they put their lives on the line, not knowing what they're like, what they really are signing themselves up for, because they find out how much hustle work it requires, you know, and sometimes they, they'll hit a you know, people will hit a point where like, this sucks. Like, this is hard. I got to actually do this myself. You know, I got to take calls on the weekend, like after hours, like, like, yes, you do, you know, and, and that's what you sign up for. That's what you, you know, put your life on the line for. And it's easy to get caught up sometimes, especially in high dollar markets like Hawaii or Seattle, because you get immune to the number of like commas in there sometimes, you know, and zeros. So um, we forget that sometimes when you're signing on the line, like you are signing on the line, like you are responsible for that debt. You are responsible for that person who just invested maybe $200,000 with you, you know, and if uh, you make the wrong move, you know, it's not just you that pays, you know, sometimes it's other people around you, maybe who are counting on profits, right? So that's why um, it, it, seeing someone like you, <laughs> who has started from, you know, just an ideal, like, I want to get into house flipping, you know, like, and just push through, plow through the barriers, you know, and come out the other end where your partners make just as much as you, you know, on a deal when you took all the risk and you did all the work, you know, like, um, I, I, like, that's something to be said about, about what it takes to break through in this industry, you know, because it's very fair. It rewards people who are, um, who deserve it and you definitely deserved it bro so congratulations on that first deal and thank you for coming to us for that loan and thank you for sharing to the group like you're an inspiration jeremy and we want to see you you know keep going so and we'll have your back hey thank you so much Corey. yeah thank you for, again for having me here and thank you guys for funding yeah. my first deal you guys will fund all my deals you know and i try to spread the word about you guys as much as i can and i know i got a couple of people here that uh, ask me about private uh, money lending. I'm like, or hard money lending. I'm like, Hey, these guys, they're dope. You know? Yeah. So whatever yeah, actually, I you have, like, we have like two, I think we have two deals in that, that was referred by you. I think so. Thank you. Thank thank you. you. <laughs> I really appreciate it. And uh, thanks for sharing. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. You got any last things for the group before we part? No, oh, this is, this is great. I always love hearing Jeremy's story. Hey, I'd love to just see if anybody has a, uh, for a future episode, has anybody had a nightmare deal? Like an absolute, it fell apart. It was just the most stressful time in your life. Uh, would love to just break that apart too. We, we always get a chance to hear some real success stories. Uh, Corey and I could go on for hours about like nightmare deals where we were stressed and ate sushi till two o'clock in the morning trying to figure out how to dig ourselves out. And that's honest to God, true story. Um, but it would be cool to just hear if anybody else has anything like that. If you do, would you just hit Corey or I up and just say, hey, I've got something that happened. And, and just because there's so much to learn from the mistakes. Um, and, and I think that would make us all richer just to hear some of those stories, not to embarrass anybody. Uh, Corey and I are the first ones to just lay it all on the line and tell you every, anything you want us to tell you, we'll tell you. There's no, no secrets with us. Uh, but I just, you know, you get tired of hearing Corey talk. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, if you got anything like that, that'd be super I'll send cool. you guys a few. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Something out there. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> What's up, guys? Hey, what's up, buddy? 
Uh, before I forget, um, awesome job, Jeremy, but I wanted to throw something out there as an agent as well um, to, to look out for the more projects we do um, that you probably run into. <laughs> um, with as active as you are with social media, and I didn't realize that you also sell your houses on the back end, but just protect yourself with the what you're putting out there and then when you fill out your um srpds hmm. so because jealousy and envy is real yes i'm sorry sellers real property disclosure statement because when people add it up and when i mean people it's people in our circle as far as realtors um the hate is real um i'm speaking from experience with violations and having to go in front of the board um we mean the best for whatever reason, people want to bring us down. Um, so just protect yourself and just be mindful that when you're putting content out there, especially on those bust up houses, termite damage, crazy kind of shit. And then all of a sudden when it VIX is nice, that realtor on the other side is normally the person that's been following you throughout the process and they, they bring a buyer to leverage that. And then they use that. And then when you read your seller's property disclosure statement that you filled out and you only did lightly kind of thing, filled it out and you didn't put detailed information and then they compare the photos and they're going to use that against you. Um, so just remember that um, super sound, helpful advice that's going to protect you. Um, but other than that, I mean, keep crushing it, dude. Hey, thanks, bro. No, that is solid advice. And I didn't really think of that. But now that you mentioned that, I could totally see that happening. You know, they'll be like, Oh, you said lightly remodeled. It shows here in your YouTube video that this had a complete hole in it. So I think uh, I think going forward, I'll probably, you know, I guess document certain things. Uh, but yeah, that's a really good one. Thank you. Yeah. Or Jeremy, Jeremy, one yeah. thing is uh, don't list your own properties. Uh, I started doing that. Was just don't list them, uh, and then make sure your properties are bought in an LLC and then in another state like Wyoming, so that way they can't trace you. Not that you're trying to hide information, but your social media is so important to you that if you went into a house and just be like, oh, look at the pretty doorknob, it's not the same as look at all this dry rot, you know? So you're going to want to do all that stuff. So, so you just got to separate the two and, and then you're going to lose some commission. But at the same time, you're going to gain uh, the opportunity to have a little more peace of mind because Keone's totally right. There's people out there who just, they think you're making a ton of money off YouTube and TikTok and sponsors and, you know, you made a hundred thousand off the last deal. So you know, they're, they're just, they're figuring it out. I mean, Corey and I got sued for a six figure number a year ago. And, um, you know, it, it's just, it's bad because those, those agents and those attorneys, they'll dig everything up about you. And it's because I listed the property, they found everything out. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, I ain't listing my properties anymore. Uh, and so, and then when you also take videos, the other thing that I learned from someone is don't say the address. So don't mm -hmm. say, Hey, Eva beach. And this is, you know, this is on, Kaoni loop or something like that you know and everyone's like oh that's exactly the house i made an offer on you know so you just kind of like oh you know i got this house and they're just like oh it's cool because nobody on the mainland cares it's in Eva beach they're just they just think you're cool you know yeah oh that is really good advice i will yeah we had a uh, yeah. one time when i well we we're closing one of our properties at like i think it was in portlock and i, I posted or um, the buyer ended up finding my Instagram and like saw the before pictures, you know, so and like they got spooked and were trying to say how like uh, things weren't disclosed and stuff. And so I, I sent the like, I don't know if they're asking for something. I, maybe Ashley remembers, but I don't know if they're trying to negotiate me down or something. But I sent an email um, to them, but through Ashley, who was representing us and basically saying like, you know, um, like as, as we mentioned in our sellers disclosures, cause we don't hide anything, you know, and we document, we document and we take pictures. Thank, thank God. Like the, that case that Kipo was talking about, like we took all the pictures, you know, and like that, that problem went away pretty, you know, pretty quick. And, um, when, when you, when we had that happen to us, like my position was, no, I'm proud of the products that we put out there, you know, and like the, those photos are proof to the extent that we will go to, to bring a house back to life, you know, cause now they have like a full, fully upgraded luxury home that they're buying and they bought, you know, it at a, at a good price, a fair price. And, you know, we stand behind our work, 
you know, and we're proud of it. And that's why I publicly show that to, you know, everyone. I want to, I want people to see the type of work that we do for our local community our, in our neighborhoods, you know? So I sent that email, it's on my Instagram somewhere, but maybe I'll share it. Cause like, it took me, like, I, I was offended at first. Of course you want to be defensive, right? <laughs> but then I, then it came down to like, okay, what stance are we going to take? You know, are we just going to kind of like bend the knee and be like, oh, okay, you know, like we'll give you what you want because you saw photos. And to me, that I, that's not fair. You know, that's not fair to me. And um, we trust our guys and the guys, you know, who sweat it out for us every day, you know, and, and, and I want to have their back, you know, and like, no, I, we post this because we're proud and we have nothing to hide. If I had something to hide, maybe I would not post it, you know, um, but that's not the case, you know, I, that's, and then uh, again, I think after that, we moved to close. So we never heard anything back about that. It was more that it was posted before the deal was even done. So posting your projects, your flips and all that information while you're on market and live and under contract, especially with that, that information, you're just kind of setting yourself up for someone finding it. And it would naturally spook any buyer, you know, yeah. so. But I wouldn't, like, it wouldn't have happened. changed my position, like, whether we did it before or after. And if anybody ever has that happen to them, then, like, I can send you that email I sent. You can draft something quite similar because if you feel the same, you know, if you can stand behind your work, like, you should be proud of it, you know, and there should be no, re we're free to post you know, publicly. I think, the, I think the big thing um, is because we're realtors. Yeah, Jeremy, mm -hmm. we're held to a higher That's a little standard. different. So like as an investor, the way Corey's speaking is absolutely true, but I'm speaking because we wear the hats of agent and investor. And because we're held to a higher standard, we got to watch ourselves. So like the things that we post, and I'm talking about like ticket items, like when you initially post the befores of like something that looks like mold, and then all of a sudden, or like popcorn ceiling. And then all of a sudden, when it gets to the end, and then you just said it was lightly repaired or fixed. And they're like, wait, was that abatement? Was that black mold? And you didn't even say anything in your seller's report or disclosure statement. And when you scrape the ceilings, it's like, wait, isn't this pre, you know, like, so was that asbestos? So they start digging into all of this as an agent because they're trying to gain leverage. So like as an investor, and they have an agent representing them, they can get away with that. You know, I mean, we can, but as an agent representing yourself, right. you're in the corner already. So that's like, a little harder. Protect yourself with all of these big ticket items. And that's why I agree with what Kiko is saying is that think about, I know we want to make that money. I think I had this conversation even with Daniel, like, how come you don't just sell your own house? That's the profit. But it's more than that. It's liability. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That we want to protect ourselves. Because at the end of the day, as investors, our job is to sell the house and move to the next. We, want, we don't want to get stuck with this property with all of these lawsuits and, you know, arbitrations and blah, blah, blah. We want to move on to the next project like you did. In the middle of a project, I'm already looking for my next project, but we don't want to get held up. So that's all I'm saying. But I love the energy that you're producing. But these are the things that people in our business, they don't support us. That's why I love our circle and our sphere, because we're all about pushing each other. But remember, in this business, like life people always want to bring us down so just protect ourselves, and that's what i'm all just throwing this advice out there that these little things make a difference but keep doing what you're doing i wouldn't say change it because dude you are doing it differently and i love the content that you're putting out there just kind of be mindful and put that somewhere in there that like oh can this shit come back to haunt me other than that don't change yourself dude yeah, yeah. It. Hey, man, keep it going jeremy um, thank you yeah, yeah, Kelly, that's such good advice dude that thank you for doing yeah. that that was that was awesome yeah, you hit a point too where it doesn't make sense for you. Like your your time is best. You make money out there finding and funding deals, building relationships to get deals and get money, right? That's why Keone is, uh, you know, you you probably uh, that's why you you know you list with Ashley or you know other realtors because like it's it, it, you need to be focused on finding deals, right? And, and you can choose. They can choose my battles for sure. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. Right on. Right on, guys. Thank you for sharing. Um, we look forward to seeing Corey, the next real quick. Next clip too. Oh, quick, man. Um, our Grand Falls team is the number one citywide team in all of Washington. Woohoo! So oh, you guys? To, um, no way. 
That's Let awesome. Know that. We're a congratulations family, Ohana. Yeah. You know, pushing that Hawaiian spirit and just like, you know, <laughs> everyone that deals with us, it's like your your family. Yeah. Um, yeah. So just I love Matt, it. Matt's been killing it. Matt was um, it's like we went CEO. We had an event uh, last week or a few weeks ago, and literally go up, shake her hand. She's like, "We already know who you are." I was like, "All right." <laughs> so just just a shout out. Well, you know, <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, our our small little no one. Everyone was like, why are you going to open up something like this? We're out, way out here. But uh, yeah. Hawaiian That's spirit. awesome. So just, just shout out. Congratulations, we are. Congratulations, yeah. brother. So, right on, guys. What? You're breaking up with win, guys. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> the coffee hey. talk's found. Yeah, we love it. This has been a great, uh, it's been a great coffee talk. Of course, then there's somebody in the corner who's working out at the gym. <laughs> the whole time I'm Jerry. like, I want to go to the gym now. Jarek, nice. <laughs> or Sorry about that. I just had to, I just had to uh, attend this. <laughs> oh, we're glad that you're on. You're inspiring us. And then Alex is making us want to go hiking. The rest of us are like, here. On and Blaze usually at the gym too. Yeah, Blaze. Yeah, yeah, Blaze. Right on. Well, awesome. I hope everybody has a great Aloha Friday. Have a great weekend. And we'll see you next week. All right. Have a good week, you know. See ya. Thanks, Thank Jeremy. you, Jeremy. For sure. Take care. Yeah. Jeremy. I forgot to say a good deed for, for Jeremy, Mateo. He, Jeremy, you always, always give your contacts out. You always try to connect people and you always try to, Anytime you come across something and it's like a good link for you, or you think that it might be good for someone else, even though it's, you know, something that could maybe set you back or would take time away from you, you always share. So I just connector. think that that's super awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. Power of networking, you know, you never know what could lead to you. You're our people, bro. You ain't going nowhere. Yep. <laughs> Love it. Thanks, Jeremy. Yeah. No problem, guys. Bye, guys. Right on, guys. Oh, you ran a little bit late. I gotta jump on my next call. So uh, hopefully I'll uh, see you guys in the in the group. And uh, otherwise, next Friday. Take care, everybody. Peace. Mala. Good one. <laughs>